So we have today DC, the brain supreme of tag team. Tag team back again. <laughs> Party people. <laughs> All of that. <laughs> now sprinkles. <laughs> sprinkles. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my goodness, man! Wait, wait till we talk about that. You're gonna be like, oh my god! <laughs> yeah, I remember watching you when I was younger, and that video looked like so much fun. And you guys mm-hmm. had Ed Lover in it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, boy. Ed Lover. Yeah. Oh um, my gosh! Yeah. Mm-hmm. So memories, but let's um do you want to tell us about yourself or I mean, you know, up. I am who I am. Uh my name is DC the Brain Supreme of Tag Team. My name is DC Glenn. My government name is Cecil Glenn. For those who went to school with me, I'm here. <laughs> and um I am a world class figure skater. Just kidding. I'm a hip hop artist, made a record back in 93 called Whoop, There It Is. And recently I'm featured in a new Geico commercial that every little baby and every little grandparent loves called Scoop, There It Is. And my life is so overwhelmed right now with just everything. And I just never thought that 28 years later, it would end up being bigger than the original record, like just overall. So I'm very happy. And this has been a great experience and it has allowed me to grow in ways that I could have never grown as far as business, uh, public relations, uh, all the things that you need to be successful in this day and age, especially in COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of COVID, we have a couple of questions. Um, Uh Uh-oh. Yeah. So you are going to help me answer questions today. Mm -hmm. So the first question is from Emily out of California, and she is asking for advice on how to make her marriage spicy during during COVID-19 since she feels her, her partner seems more aggravated since both of them are currently working from home. They are Mm. constantly seeing each other more now because of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to help me answer that one? And it's just those two? It's just those two? That's that's the, those are the details I got. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't have that situation because I am single, single, but I think that is just a very difficult question to answer because we've never been in this position, right? And, you know, this pandemic has forced everybody to just stop and reevaluate everything that they've been doing, what they believe, what their values are, who they're with, all the things that we kind of take for granted as we just grind through life. And it seems to me that it is a test an intestinal fortitude. It shouldn't be, right? You should love the one that you're around all the time, but you know, there's there's a reality to everything. And if you haven't been used to being around that person all the time, that I could see it might be difficult. But um, I don't know, it's, it's, it, that's a hard question to answer. You could say, well, stay out of each other's way. Or it could be like when, when he's working or they're, I, guess, I guess they're both working from home, that's a tough one that's a tough one i would say i would say just all of the irritation all of the negative um emotions that you have because this is what i've acquired uh the ability to do over the years is you know sadness despair uh envy anger just every emotion that can bring you down in a negative way go ahead and feel it right but put it in your pocket and use it as you use it as motivation. Learn how to use it, right? Like I'm an actor and a voice artist. So I could put it in my pocket because when I do auditions, I could pull it out and use it and it gets released, right? Don't release it on the other person. Release it on your work. Release it when you're cleaning up the kitchen. Release it when you're going for a walk. That's what I've 
been able to do. And it has made my life so much better because things don't really get to me that much. Right. And they, you know, I'm not saying that I don't feel things. I feel it and I get mad, but I don't, I choose to not react to it in a way that lasts for hours and hours. And then you start resenting the other person. And then you start, you know what I mean? You can't do that. You got to keep pushing. You got to, you got to, you know, this is the chance for you to reinvent yourself, live your dreams, make your marriage better, all those things. So use all that irritation in a positive way, which is easier said than done. Mm -hmm. I can see her all day and, and just, you know, blow that smoke, but it's true. I mean, I, I you know, to begin this pandemic, I stopped and I had to say, what are you gonna do? Right, because now we are all in the Serengeti. What are you gonna do? <laughs> you gonna be a lion? You gonna be an Impala? How you gonna maneuver? What you gonna do, right? And you have to figure it out. And if you're sitting, waiting for it to be like it used to be, you're gonna be sitting, waiting for it to be like it used to be. Because yeah. it's a new frontier, everything has changed, it's not coming back. So this is the chance for you to try something new, live your dreams, you know, learn something. You know, that's that's what I do. I, I, my whole motto is learn how to learn, right? There are other ways to be successful and learn how to get the knowledge you need to be able to cope with all the things that you're going to. And then you live in California, so they really stuck. So, you know, all I can do is give you the advice that I would do. And that might not be the best advice for you, but that's what I would do. And it has worked for me thus far because 2020 has been one of the best years of my life. I think, I mean, this pandemic has been one of the best things that's ever happened to me because it forced me to do things that otherwise I would not have done. You know, it forced me to take stock of what is important in your life. And, you know, sometimes when that happens to people, they realize that they're not in situations that they like. So mm -hmm. you got to be honest with yourself. But then, you know, it takes intestinal fortitude, too. And you got to be strong and you got to keep it moving. That's what I choose to do. Just keep it moving. Play offense. Mm -hmm. So that's the best I can do. I could say, you know, buy him a teddy bear or whatever, but mm -mm. <laughs> he's going to be he's going to be irritated because he's the man. Right. And as a man, you know, it's rough because you're the head of the household. And, and then now you got to be with your spouse all the time. You don't you guys are there together 24 seven. The love is there, I'm sure. But hey. People get on my nerves and I'll be around them for five minutes. So I understand. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? It, it, I, I get yeah. it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can't even imagine, you know, unless it's somebody you really want to be with. And right. that's yeah. what that's what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I know. So I don't know if you got a chance to read my background, but I come from marriage and family therapy background. Really? And I also, yeah, and I also got into acting a few months ago during the pandemic as well. You know, I said, ah. you know what? Let me go for goals and dreams that I had a long time ago. You know, life is too short. So, you know what? Yeah. You've met the right one because I can help you get from point A to point B quicker than anybody. Mm -hmm. Because I'm the guinea pig. I've been the guinea pig for all my classmates, the guinea pig for anybody who's willing to listen. I was yeah. in class every single day. Sometimes I was in class two, three times a day. Right. I've taken every intensive. I've flown all over the country. I went mm. hard and it was difficult and I wasn't getting anywhere. But that's mm. what acting is. Right. Mm -hmm. Acting is very, very challenging because it is the. To me, acting is the pursuit. Of being your true self. Mm. Right. Because if you're a character in a movie. And you can go back in your life and grab one of those experiences. That's what I mean by put it in your pocket. You can go grab that, that experience where that day that your husband really pissed you off and bring that to the character. Now that character is you, mm -hmm. right? But you're the character, right? You see, I said, you don't have to try to be somebody else. You can, you can, and, and that's what I, I started. I learned how to do that. And mm -hmm. acting has been one of the best things that's ever happened to me. And it happened by chance because I do voiceover. And, you know, my agency, the owner was like, I love your face, put him on camera. And I was like, what, what? And she was like, they were like, you gotta take some headshots, you gotta take acting mm -hmm. lessons. Yeah. So once I did my yep. first acting lessons, I was hooked. Then I just been going hard. And, you know, anybody out there that wants to act, I would suggest there's a site called weaudition.com. 
And because LA and New York is shut down, we audition as the Zoom for actors, right? And these actors can make money by reading for people who have auditions. So sometimes I'll have, I'm in Atlanta, so Atlanta's just crunk right now. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'll have five auditions a day. Mm -hmm. And you don't, if you don't got nobody to read for you, you can't even do all those auditions. And that used to be the problem for me until the pandemic. Then that, you know, New York is shut down, LA is shut down. So I'm working with, you know, Juilliard trained actresses, Broadway actresses, Broadway coaches, writers, and they read for me, but then they teach me at the same time because yeah. they have been through it too. I'm, I'm being, I'm actually being, not necessarily being coached, but collaborating with mm -hmm. people who have been in the game for 30, 40 years and they're putting me on game and I'm listening. And my acting has went and now I'm booking, right? I, I was on set last Friday, you know, then I got booked for a Disney commercial and I was number two because in COVID you got to have two principals or two number ones. Another guy got the, he got the job, but if he didn't pass the COVID, I would have been up and I still got paid. So I relish the chance. I used to, I used to hate getting an audition. Now I relish the chance to get an audition because I get yeah. to work and I get to put in the reps. It's like going to the gym and you have to find something that you've always wanted to do. Right. And then you have to learn how to learn it. Right. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to read a book or I'm going to do this because sometimes I don't want to read. So how do you how do you get back by that? Well, I dump that into AI software and it reads to me. Or I will take a YouTube video that I don't have time to listen to, dump it in the AI software and it makes a transcript of it or a class that I've taken that I've recorded that makes a transcript like technology can help you achieve your goals. Yeah. And it could be your assistant. It could be your PA. It could, it could be three PAs at one time. Then you become more productive, right? You and I met because of my hustle, right? I'm throwing pictures out there. I, I was looking for a publicist and they were like, well, we don't know what to do. You know, a Geico commercial is cool, but we're in a pandemic and usually we do premieres. And I was like, cool. And I'm like, I need... I got, I can't let this opportunity pass me by. So I joined, when, when that happens, I join organizations mm -hmm. because if you join an organization or a society, that organization or society is full of people who've been in the game for 10, 20, 30 years who are willing mm -hmm. to teach everybody else. And they're all trying to be better. And you're around like-minded people. Yeah. So that in itself can be freeing because you're around the people that can teach you the things that you want to know and can help you you know, bypass some of the thing, you know, some of your in the wilderness, you know, uh, habits that make you quit because a lot of times it's so challenging. People just quit because they can't find the answers. And I joined a P, uh, um, uh, what was it called? Um, see, I always get press released and public relations mixed up. <laughs> so the public relations society of America, right? And I got on a Zoom call like two days in and it was the mm -hmm. CEO of some PR firm. And I was like, I got a question. How are press releases relevant? Cause I had had a press release ready for the Geico thing, right? Mm -hmm. And the lady was like, yeah, what's it for? I was like, well, I'm kind of featured in a Geico commercial called Scoop, there it is. And I'm looking at the, the chat and it's like, wait a minute, what? Oh my God, that's my favorite commercial. And just the chat blew up, right? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, everything changed. And the moderator was like, we like to welcome DC because he's brand new. He's been here two days because they had all the information. And they said, well, is, is, is our press release is relevant? And the lady was like, heck yeah, they're relevant, especially now because that brings joy to people in a time where there's despair. Mm -hmm. So you better hurry up and drop that press release now. And you better do this, you know, you need, you need to do this to get in front of all your uh, 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 journalists. You need to do this to get your podcast, radio and serious. And you need to have your pitches designed like that. They gave me the game in 10 minutes. Mm. And I would have been searching for months trying to figure out how to be a publicist. Now, now I am my own PR firm. I can get in front of anybody now. Mm -hmm. I've got 
I've got podcast and radio interviews and television interviews as far as the eye could see. Because I dropped that press release, I, I they called us on Tamron Howard. I'm mm-hmm. working on Ellen. Tam- I'm working Tamron on Kelly Hall. Clark's. Yeah, Tamron mm-hmm. Hall. I'm sorry, Tamron. I Hall. saw you on Tamron Hall. <laughs> yeah, and and that right there changed the narrative again because mm-hmm. she was so. That was the most impressed I've been with a person in a long time because mm-hmm. I saw what true professionalism was. Because I like to think I'm professional. I I live my life by that. But to see somebody who took my inf- well, you know, I'm pretty sure she got they got a team, but right. they took that information and they created a narrative that was so eloquent. And I ran with it. It was like a story of redemption, a story of you're never too old to do with this. It's a story. It was several different threads that I could have that I'd just been running with. And the Tamron Hall, that's just that was just a byproduct of me dropping that press release. And I dropped it three days before Super Bowl and 300 people picked it up. So I also know SEO. So now that's 300 dude follow links coming back to my website. Now my website is blown up. Tag team website is blown up. Now I'm getting I'm getting emails of people want us to sign autographs for their baby and people want <laughs> us to sing at their wedding. And it's just, it's been overwhelming, but that is all because of the hustle. That is yeah. all because of playing offense. You know, you lay those seeds. I, I laid so many seeds throughout my life. And now I'm standing in a forest, right? And the opportunities are there. So I don't mean to just run on and on, but what's your next question? <laughs> <laughs> so let me add something to it mm-hmm. for um, the couple before we move on to the next one. Mm-hmm. So with them being at home, you brought up a good point of going out, taking a walk. So mm-hmm. if they find themselves getting on each other's nerves, we're all individuals, right? Mm-hmm. So sometimes we need our alone time and they could go on walks together or alone just to mm-hmm. kind of cool off. And then they can come back together. They can have their date nights or what have you. But like you said, don't take out the frustration on each other and just say, look, mm-hmm. you know what? I'm aggravated today. I'll see you in a few minutes. I need some time alone and then come back together. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of how me being by myself, that's how I got through. I mean, I see how people go crazy. I, I swear, because during the early days of the pandemic, like there might be five minutes during the day where you just start your mind, start wandering. <laughs> you start what's going to happen is, you know, the zombies going to start coming out of everything you know, like it, everybody was tripping. And what I would do, I would get up at probably like five in the morning, five, six in the morning. And I would go to grocery store parking lot off in the corner. I had all my weights and all my workout stuff in the truck. And I would just, it was always cool. Last spring was the most beautiful spring. It was like no pollen. It was sunny every day. It was cool. And I would just work out for an hour and a half every day at the grocery store and then be the first to go in the grocery store, get my stuff and go home. That's all I needed just that little that little bit of time outside mm-hmm. to feel like I was not cooped up and locked in jail yeah. and and that's what you have to do like if you just have to do that that should that could be something you could get away in the morning before you even come to work then you go to work and you're refreshed that's something he could do after work and then he's he's refreshed you got to find some place off in the woods where you can go chop down a tree something anything and you're away from people so you will enjoy it, right? Take your little transistor radio or little radio and just sit back, sit out somewhere and just chill or go fishing or anything. Mm-hmm. But being cooped up in the house, that's not going to help you. <laughs> because there's only so much cleaning you could do. There's only so much TV, you know, so much TV watching you could do. Right. And if you're watching TV together, you kind of get on each other's nerves because it might be something she likes that he don't like. Mm-hmm. And then there's really only so much sex you can have. <laughs> Especially if you're married and you ain't been having sex all the time, right? Mm-hmm. It probably was cool for the first couple of weeks, and then it was just like, what do we do now, right? And you have to, you have to be like, I think everybody's thinking, what can she do for him, instead of her thinking, what can I do for myself? Because if I'm toxic, there's nothing. If I'm toxic towards him and he's toxic toward me, there's nothing neither one of us can do. But if I take care of myself, 
then maybe he'll see that, you know, he, he sees a different side. He sees that no matter if, no matter how much you tripping, I'm good. <laughs> and that wears off on people. It's, it's, mm-hmm. That's why it's called positive vibes. That's why yep, I choose not. Vibes. I could be mad. I could be mad as all get out <clears throat> inside, but I'm still smiling. Mm-hmm. I'm still smiling. I don't burn bridges. I'm always cordial. But in my mind, I'm like this, you know what I mean? And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's those are those are mechanisms that you learn to because I've been a club DJ all my life. Mm-hmm. So I'm always been in a hostile environment. So I understand how to deal with people well. Right. And diffuse situations and reverse psychology and all those things like that. And it just works. And I just try to help people as much as I can. And because that helps me. I learn more by running my mouth. I'm learning right now. As I'm running my mouth on your podcast, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm like, hey, that's pretty good. Hey, you can be a marriage counselor. <laughs> Let's go join a marriage counselor, <laughs> counseling organization. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, that's the most, to me, the most important thing is taking care of yourself in a situation like that. Yes. Got to take care of yourself <clears throat> before you mm-hmm. can take care of somebody else. Somebody else. else. Yep. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's okay. all it's, it's about the mental thing when it comes to being cooped yeah. up together. Yeah, it's not it's, a, it's it's truly is. And your mind already play tricks on you a lot of times when you thinking, where's he at? What's he doing? What's he going? You know what I mean? Like if you there, you know, even if there is trust, your mind still your mind is powerful <clears throat> when mm-hmm. it works against you. So you have to do things to keep it clear and you have to do things to not let it take over you and overwhelm you with just things that aren't even important. Right. Gotta take care of your mental health. Yeah, you definitely do. So that's how I used to do it. Still do. 